I was recently set this challenge by Oz de Soleil and I sold this live on his channel. If you're not already a subscriber, check out the link in the description below and go to Oz's channel and subscribe there and watch my solution. I solved it using Power Query. But at the time I thought, oh, I'm sure there's a way you can do this with formulas. So this is my solution using formulas. Let's go. So here's the challenge. We've got these people who voted for certain colors. These are the available colors that they should have picked from. They didn't, not all of them. So we've got to clean that up. Also, people are only allowed to have voted once. Some people voted multiple times, got to fix that. You're only allowed to vote for one or well, three different colors. So some people voted for orange two or three times, for example, not allowed to do that. Um, so there's a couple of things to resolve here. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of little Excel techniques for doing this. And I'll even at the end, make it even more robust and dynamic so that if new records are added, everything just auto updates. Okay, so here we go. So in this video, we're going to cover unique XLOOKUP, SUMIFS, HSTAC, SORT BY, TAKE. We'll even chuck a sequence in there. And then right at the end, just to be a bit fancy, we're going to do a DROP REDUCE VSTAC LAMBDA COMBO. All right, let's go. Right. The first thing is that there's some people who've entered votes more than once. So I'm just going to use the unique function, right, to fix up that. So unique, grab that list. Okay, so we've now got a list. If I go to the bottom, control down, you can see a few people. It's a little bit shorter because a few people have voted more than once. So I'm only going to grab their first vote. Then I want to basically grab their three votes. Okay, so I'm going to use an XLOOKUP equals XLOOKUP look up this value, okay, in um, this list. And I'm actually going to bring back all three votes in one hit. All good. Okay, and I could copy that down. Now, what would be nice is if I could actually reference this dynamic array and make it spill but it doesn't. See, it only brings back the first column. Now, if you're interested in making that fully dynamic, wait till the end and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, it's a bit gnarly, but I've done a video on it before. It's using reduce and drop. Okay, stick with it. Okay, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. Also, I've got to address the fact that, let's say for Glinda, let me just copy this down. Um, let me go control down. Control shift up. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me go back to Glinda. Where was she? Glinda has voted for orange twice. Okay, so that's not allowed. Um, so what I could do is wrap it in a unique. All right, so I'm gonna go back up here. Well, let me, let me focus on Glinda so we can actually see it in action. So this is where something like dynamic arrays inside tables would be really nice because that list would spill down. All right, anyway, um, equals unique. All right, and then when I first did this, I actually just did that, pressed enter. Huh. Not sure why. It's because unique works on, on sort of columns, on, on, not on rows, um, but you can make it work. You simply put a comma in there and then you say return unique columns rather than unique rows. So true, there we go. Okay, so now we've just got the two results. And again, if I control up, control shift down, control V, okay, there's all my unique items by unique people. So that's a bit of the challenge. That's most of the challenge actually done. Um, Making this spill dynamically, so when I add more people in here, this automatically fills down. I'll cover that right at the end, okay? All right, so now I want to say how, you know, are some of these valid? 
because there's some invalid ones in here. Like I think, what colour was it that we discovered during the other video? Cactus yellow isn't on this list. Okay, so you could find ways of cleaning that up. But to be honest, I'm only interested in how many people have voted for these colours. So I'm going to flip my logic a bit and say, right, this table, okay, is going to use stuff from here. So just to keep my flow of logic going, I'm going to drag this over to the right. Okay. And I want to add some scores. So if they, if the first vote, it's three, two, one. Okay. So I want a three copy down here, which I'm going to do a sum if on that this column, okay, and two I'm going to do a semi on that column and so on. So I want to fill this column with threes. So to make it a bit more dynamic, I'm going to go equal sequence. How many rows are there in this, or oh, sorry, in click, click that cell, in that. So that's how many rows I need. One column starting at three and step Oh, actually, let me just let me click on this cell just to make it nice and dynamic. And uh, stepping zero. Oops. Okay, so there's all my threes. And if I put a dollar sign in front of that I6, pressing F4 to lock that in. Okay, in theory, if I copy across there, I get twos. Copy across there, I get ones. Right. So then from here, I can say... Um, sort of um, vote one equals some ifs. All right, and because these aren't, a, these these are separate ranges, I can't just refer to this because these are all separate rows. Um, so I'm just gonna be really simple and go, look, sum that column, okay, if this column equals that cell press enter and there's my scores for vote one okay vote two and vote three vote two vote three and i'll do a total and the total is just going to be equals the sum of those three rows right so vote here is when i copy it i want all columns to move so that's it it's just that and that that one is then summing those columns so there's my total, okay? Um, I could then do a sort by and take the top four rows. So equals sort by. Um, so I want to get this. Well, let's be, that's the, what I really want, but I want to show the total as well. So sort by, um, what's the best way to do that? Let's just do this first and I'll have a quick think. Um, sort by this column. Uh, sort order is going to be minus one for descending. Okay, so there's my top four colors. Uh, if I want to do a, oh, I know, just a H stack. Probably another way of doing it with curly brackets or something. But if I H stack the available, okay, let me just move my formula across here so we can see a bit. So if I H stack the available with the total, okay, close the bracket. There we go. And if I then, you know, I could wrap that, but I'm just gonna be a little bit more step-by-step -step about it. So equals take from this array, the first four rows. And that's my answer. So those are the top four colors. Having applied the rules that unique individuals only can't vote more than once and you've got to use a valid color. Okay. Um, let's go make that other bit dynamic. All right. So here. Okay. How do we make this bit dynamic to spill down? I've done another video on this and I've got a little autocorrect trick. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a few years will know I use autocorrect to write formulas that I use regularly. So if I do this, spill array, 
Okay. I get a pre-built formula. I wrote this and I saved it in my autocorrect. So whenever I type spill array, it writes this formula for me. I used to do the same thing with index match formulas and other tricks as well. Um, it comes in really handy. Okay. So what is this? This I've done another video on it. A little link will pop up. Plus I'll put a link in the description below. And right at the end of the video, I'll make sure this video is linked to. Um, also on my autocorrect trick, I'll put a link to that as well. Right, what, what's this doing? Well, what I can do, if I come in here and I copy this formula, okay, control C. Um, actually, I'll put it up here with a little quote, so it just stays there. I turn on Windows um, V, which is paste values history. Really useful when you're doing this sort of thing. You can keep a history of the things you've copied. I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to delete all this stuff, okay? Right, so I'm going to put this in here. There's my weird formula. And all you do is say, right, choose array, which is this array here, okay? And then your formula replacing cell ref with each. So I'm going to do Windows key V, but I could come in and copy this formula and paste it in, but Windows key V brings up things I've recently copied, like this. I can paste it in here and just get rid of the equal sign. And then I replace the formula with underscore each and press enter. And there's my fully dynamic formula, okay? When this list gets bigger, so does this one. And then potentially over here, okay, rather than doing you know, the sum ifs against the entire column. Not that it really matters these days. Excel has been optimized to handle and ignore those blank spaces. But potentially I can now refer to one of these columns instead, you know, this array. But there you go. Hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. I really like this approach as well, you know, because that ranking, you know, that is driven by the actual scores up here. Okay, so let's say I was to move these scores. I know it doesn't really make sense to do it, but so we can see it happening. So let's say all the scores were equal, there was no weighting. Orange and purple were a tie. If I weighted the primary one as two, purple wins. But if I rated this one as like 1.5, you know, you, you potentially get different results. So it's, it's an interesting way of making it instant and fully dynamic when you use formulas. Whereas the Power Query solution that I did with Oz, you do have to click refresh. But I like this approach. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.